What's up YouTube? Today I have the Anycubic Hustle and we are going to go ahead and install a heated bed upgrade. So let's get started. Here are all the parts that I used. I have a heated bed here and here is a MOSFET. I'm going to use this for to help control the current. This is not required but it is nice. The heated bed also came with all the wiring and the thermostat, extra wire, and a switch for the AC power and this has a 10 amp fuse as well we have here a mount for the power supply and the actual power supply I'm using a 20 amp power supply since this is not a large heated bed this mount right here just connects to the power supply like this and it will actually attach to the back of the printer just like this Next what I did was remove the print bed and then I removed the six mounts that held the print bed in place and it should look just like this. So what I did was went ahead and started prepping the heated bed. I grabbed the wire that came with the heated bed, cut it down to size and went ahead and stripped all the wire that I'm going to be using for this project and went ahead and applied solder to all the wire tips. Next on the hotbed right here and right here we're going to go ahead and add a bead of solder just like so. This will help the wires just go on there a lot easier. Once we added solder to our heated bed now we can add our wires. The order of the wires does not matter. You can put them either way. And it should look just like this. Next we're going to go ahead and add our thermostat. The bulb of the thermostat should fit directly in the center and I'm going to go ahead and use Kapton tape to hold it into place. And this is how it looks after I'm done. Next I'm going to go ahead and use Sure Tape. It's a pipe insulator and I'm going to insulate the bed. You want to be careful with this stuff because once you stick it to the bed it's very hard to get it off so make sure you have your cuts right before you even put it down otherwise you're going to have a bad day. Alright once your cut is good we're going to go ahead and peel back the back portion of that pipe insulator and go ahead and lay it down on the bed just like so. I'm laying all the pipe insulator within that white circle, the white inner circle. This is how it should look after you're done. This will help hold the heat in. Next we're going to go ahead and wire up the AC to DC power supply. First I'm going to go ahead and wire the AC plug-in to the switch. Now where I am plugging this red wire in, that is the line for the AC. And this spot right here, I'm using the two top prongs for the line and the ground of the AC. Next, I'm going to go ahead and grab the ground wire, plug it in right there and go ahead and plug it right next to that line wire. Now we're just going to follow that diagram that I showed earlier and have all the wires ready for the power supply. Now this just goes in right here and we're going to just use two bolts and the square nuts that came in came with the printer. Alright so now I'm going to go ahead and just match line neutral and ground and securely fasten it down. Alright, so now that we have our AC plugged into our power supply, we're going to go ahead and start with our 12 volt wiring. Basically, we're going to go ahead and get three pairs of wire, and we're going to put in three red into the V plus and three black into the COM parts of the power supply. And this is how it should look after you get them all wired. There's a V plus adjustment right there and you could adjust your voltage if you have to. 
I went ahead and checked mine and it actually turned out to be 12.29 which is actually perfect for what we need. That we have our power supply wired we can go ahead and mount the power supply to the printer. I'm using T-nuts that I ordered off of eBay and I'm using M3 screws for the actual mount and power supply. This is how mine turned out. Alright we're gonna go ahead and start wiring our board and I left a little diagram right here where you can see how it's gonna be wired and these two are gonna be your 12 volt inputs and this is how it should look like once you got them wired and so just be aware of that you have your negative on top and your positive on bottom on these and your hotbed is just the opposite your positives on top and your negatives on bottom so just kind of be aware of that and don't make any mistakes of wiring it wrong because for the hotbed when you do the MOSFET you're gonna have to have the correct wiring done which brings us to our next thing we're gonna go ahead and do the MOSFET I'm just gonna pull the control wire out and right here is negative with the blue line and this is positive and again negative right here the blue line so we're gonna go ahead and wire it into the hotbed and it does matter where it goes just like that and so we got our control wire plugged into the hotbed outlet and so now we're gonna go ahead and mount our MOSFET and I, I just download this from Thingiverse I'll leave a link down below where to get it and I'm using the T-nuts and it's just gonna slide in right into here like that and I'll tighten it down once I wired it down and that way it's out of the way and everything will work so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the control wire and then we're gonna go ahead and plug in the 12 volt input and this matters on where you put it so positive is on the right and negatives on the left for this printer you don't necessarily need a MOSFET but it does help control the current and it will help maintain current as well so it's just kinda of safer to have. Instead I cut down to a smaller length and I didn't have the proper crimpers to put these type of brackets on so I went ahead and cut wire that I already had that already had the brackets on and we're gonna use that to wire in the thermostat alright so now we're gonna go ahead and take our heat bed wiring and we're gonna go ahead and put it in the MOSFET now these wires don't matter which way you put it so go ahead and put in however you want they just go in these two slots where that are labeled hotbed once our wiring is done we can now go ahead and mount our MOSFET to our printer using those T-nut bolts and this is how it should look now I have the wires outside of the printer they should be underneath the printer and I went ahead and changed that later on in the video so right here I'm gonna go ahead and test it what I'm mainly testing here is making sure that the thermostat for the hotbed works and it is so that's a good sign. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount the hot plate using these brackets that I found on Thingiverse. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten each screw just like this and then I'm going to insert the plate. When I inserted the plate in it was pretty loose so then you just kind of mess with the screws until everything is tightened and that plate doesn't move. And I printed this in PETG so it can handle the heat of the bed so now let's do a final test what I'm gonna test is using my phone I'm gonna test how long it takes to heat up to 70 degrees Celsius I'm gonna select both the extruder and the heated bed to warm up at the same time that way I'm pulling as much current as I possibly can through that power supply and get a real time on it so we're already at about 12 seconds and we're gonna go ahead and go through this and see how long it takes 50 degrees Celsius a minute 26 All right we finally hit 70 degrees Celsius and we hit it at 2 minutes and 49 seconds on a side note I noticed when I felt the bed that it was still a little bit cool and so two minutes later I checked it and the bed was finally at the correct temperature it equalized from the, the 
hotbed plate to the actual printing bed. So just be aware of that. It might take an additional two minutes because that glass is pretty thick. Also that thermostat is in the direct center and it's not touching the bed so it's not getting the reading of the glass bed so it's going to take a little bit to equalize. Alright so we have completed the heated bed upgrade for the AnyQ Castle. If you guys found this helpful I know it was kind of a boring video but if you guys found it helpful please give me a thumbs up it helps the channel out. Also if you're looking for an AnyCube yourself I'll leave a link down below and if I have a coupon code I'll leave it in the description as well. All the parts that I use including all the models that I downloaded from Thingiverse will be available down in a link below. Future upgrades for the AnyQ Castle that I'm going to do is a linear rail system and I'm working on the auto bed as we speak. I'm having a little bit of difficulties with the BL Touch so I might try a different sensor. Not sure if it's a firmware issue or if it's a user issue or a sensor issue but we'll see. I'll get to the bottom of it. So if you guys want to see more videos like this please subscribe and thank you guys for watching.